Weird Woman is intended for adult audiences and discusses mental health, history, and other tough topics. Take care when listening. So, <clears throat> so I'm recording this because I can't write fast enough. Everything online says to keep a dream journal, but I, yeah, I can't get it all out on paper quick enough before I forget everything. My hand cramps, maybe because I don't write as much anymore or we as a culture don't write much anymore. I don't know. So as I write, even with abbreviations and uh, bare bones, I can't get it down fast enough and it all starts fading. The dream's colors and details, the sound of it, the way they feel in their bodies, their thoughts. So yeah, I thought to avoid losing it, I'd try making voice notes. I've never even used this app before, and I have no idea what it will sound like when I listen back. Probably terrible audio speaking right into it or something. <laughs> ah, fuck, I'm already forgetting. I, I was sort of trying to set the stage here, and that's taking too much time, so now... Just the edges are there. I think this dream had the broken one. That's what she thinks of herself. She's been called so many things, but one time someone said she was a broken human being and a broken woman, and it stuck with her. People are such assholes. There was more in the dream. Of course, she was she was doing something. It was it's, it's slipping away. It's thinning out. Damn it. I'm up again. The same night, another dream. I'm wondering if I always have multiple dreams in a night, and maybe they just don't wake me up. Or maybe this is new. Maybe it's because of this place. The the new place. Maybe I'm sleeping weird because it's not my bed. And, you know, the, the fear. This dream was the house on the hill. The old one, living alone. The spinster. She was feeding an animal. A horse. Its lips on her palm. My palm. I've never smelled a horse before and I could smell it. Shit and sweat and heat. And also a sort of spice. And it was quiet. Not just an out-in-the-country quiet, like a quiet that's never, I don't know, known the sound of cars or planes or machinery before all of it. That's it. That's all I remember. Maybe I'll remember more and it will come better as I keep doing this if 
if I keep doing this. It feels so fucking weird talking to a void in my phone, thinking like, am I going to want to listen to this again? I mean, I hate the sound of my voice. I think everyone does, but I don't know. Something's telling me I need to do this. So I'm just, I'm just going to do it. Major Tom, <laughs> he's curled up next to me, purring, and <laughs> he's looking at me funny. I think he's hes still weirded out that we're here. This isn't home for him, or me. Recording this is its easier than writing. I didn't know if it would be, but once I start... It, the, the words come. And I mean, I, I always think way faster than I can write. Even on my laptop, even here. My thoughts run so fast, but uh, here at night, I, I'm still half asleep, so it sort of matches the right speed or something. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to try it at least tonight and get through this night because if I don't it the dreams haunt me they're they're haunting me even if I don't remember all the details which I usually don't I I have this sense all day long that someone is right there right in the corner of my eye someone that's been inside my head or someone I've been inside theirs and not just one someone. Multiple. There's five so far. Five women that I know I'm dreaming about. Their dreams. Their dreams, their their dreams, but they're real. These women are real. They feel real. And that's that's weird. So I, I have to, I have to make this clearer. I have to figure this out. I have to just keep going. It's only an hour later, only four thirty something. Jesus, when I sleep, I must start to dream immediately. I must be dreaming all night. No wonder I'm always tired or feeling like my brain is overstuffed. Okay, let's get to the point, quick. This was the asylum. The mad one. And the place, it's more of a dumping ground. Not like any mental institution we'd see today, or even in older movies. There's people howling in the halls. She has seen people in chains, naked and shitting themselves. She was looking out the window in the dream, looking out through smudged glass and wire or metal outside the glass. But if she squinted, she could see. If I squint, I can see glass, green, color. No colors in here. No colors for the mad woman. No colors for the ghost in the haunted house. I stand at the window. Nothing else to do. Nothing else but fall down. Deep. Deeper than I am now. Deep to where the others have fallen. I stand at the window and remind myself there's a world out there. Even if it's forgotten me. Even if it doesn't want me. It's there. I stand at the window so I have something to hold on to. So I don't fall into the abyss. So I don't... <clears throat> I don't know. I think it's gone. The, the dream. It's all just black. It's... I'm so tired. I'm, I'm going to sleep. Yeah. Mm. 
my alarm just went off and I feel like I didn't sleep at all. Like instead I was awake hours or days. Like I lived longer than I have and lived in other bodies. I sound fucking insane. Maybe the mad one. Maybe that's just me. Maybe this is the dream. This what I call real life. Getting up, getting ready for work, doing the things you do when you live a life. Mm, mm, before I forget, just before I woke up, I was, I was just dreaming of the ugly one. Same kind of thing, where someone called her that and she came to think of herself that way. I can't see her yet, see outside her head to see if it's true, but I mean, ugly? What even is that? <laughs> And why does it matter? Why does a genetic lottery decide that? And anyway, it was her. She was working somewhere that looks like a common lounge or something. She was the only woman I saw in the room. A whole bunch of men in suits, gruff and smoking and glancing at each other like they're in a race. And she knows the men, they're they're not as smart as they think they are. They Did my voice just change? All that gone filled instead with stories and lies and questions, and that's why I'm here. What the fuck was that? It's lunchtime. I've been distracted and creeped out all morning. I knew my dreams were strange, right? I knew that. That's why I wanted to start this sort of dream journal thing so I could remember them better and understand them. Because honestly, what else is there? This is the most interesting thing to happen in my life for what? Years? besides doom scrolling and the world outside us. I'm at this house doing office work for an office company. There's just nothing there. I sit at my desk for the required time. I take my breaks for food. I read and sometimes I draw shitty drawings and I feed my cat and that's it. I've never been good with people. I've never understood people. I can't figure out how friendships work, let alone romantic stuff. And people, they sniff me out. They know there's something off about me. The way I hold my body, maybe, or the way I look at them, or the things I say. They figure me out. They spot me as weird odd, different, and that makes them uncomfortable. So I'm mostly on my own, and I'm mostly okay with that. It feels safe and right to be alone, especially now. But it can get boring, too. Repetitive lonely, makes you wonder what this is all for, and if it's worth going on. 
And then I start having these dreams like nothing I've ever had. It's kind of exciting. I just couldn't remember them well. And I mean, let's be honest. I like the idea of having these women in my head, like imaginary friends or something. And I wanted to know them more. But I'm less than a day into this experiment and I'm <laughs> this morning I've been getting I guess sort of flashbacks of the dreams I had last night with more details and it's it's like the act of doing this of trying to capture it has unlocked something like all those details were just waiting for me to try to remember like they, like the dreams, like the women want to be remembered. And then I just listened back to my recordings from last night. And I remembered another dream that I didn't wake up from. And so I didn't record it. It was the fifth one, the unnatural one. She thinks of herself in those words in an ironic sort of way. She has the thoughts and feelings that the world calls unnatural, but she thinks are the most natural, real things. And she's got one crush in particular on a woman she sees in her neighborhood. And in the dream, she was on a bench, like a, a park bench, and people were walking the paths of the park, dressed in clothes I can't place. And she saw her crush. She got all warm, and the anticipation, it felt good, like a pleasant sort of tingle. But then, the dream, like, skipped and I wasn't in her head anymore. I was next to her on the bench. And the unnatural one, she... She turned in her seat. She was younger than I thought and smaller. And she looked right at me. She looked into my fucking eyes and she saw me. Me. And smiled. What are these fucking dreams? What are they? Maybe, maybe there's a better question. Who are these women? Woman is an audio drama from Broads and Books Productions. The show is written, performed, and produced by Amy Lee Lillard. Music comes from the Ghosts albums by Nine Inch Nails, courtesy of a Creative Commons license. Find full episode notes, transcripts, and show details at weirdwomanpodcast.com. If you like what you hear, tell a weird friend. Thanks for listening.
In the Fuzzy Memories podcast, we celebrate the good, the rad, and the fugly of the 80s and 90s. We're three latchkey kids who made it out alive. And in each episode, we break down all the culture that popped one year at a time. Whether it's the birth of legends. I'm Lyme disease free today and I have Whitney Houston and MTV to thank. (laughs) Or audacious moves. Imagine also the the poor Golden Gate Bridge. You turn 75 and people have a party on you. I don't want that. (laughs) Or even confusing PSAs. In the stop, drop, and roll. I mean, we would, I assume as an adult, I would catch on fire weekly. All the time! (laughs) We've got a take that will make you laugh. We've also got thoughts on all sorts of random phenomena and the most unmitigated of golf. Why sharks can't be trusted, people can't be trusted, and rivers can't be trusted. (laughs) It's collusion. It's of the (laughs) highest degree! Uh Uh-huh. You were counseling me to start my remarks with, first of all, bitch. (laughs) Everyone in that room would have snapped to attention. It's going to be basically coffee lids, shark revenge, and then maybe like Matt Getz. (laughs) We need to do something about him. Join us every other Wednesday to celebrate the hits, the misses, and the misfits of the weirdest decades. If I could tell my 14-year-old self from 1990 that I would be eating in a cheesecake factory in, in Beverly, Beverly Hills. Hills, I'd be like, we did it. We, we did it, Joe. We did it. <laughs> Listen and subscribe to Fuzzy Memories on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and your favorite podcast platform. Fuzzy Memories.